Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to Umar Radio. You are listening to the Fiqh class with myself Abu Musab. All right, so we are still busy with, busy with the kitab known as Nurul Idah of Imam Ashurun Bulali rahimahullah and we're doing a an additional second class for this week for the purpose of completing the chapter of Psalm before the month of Ramadan reaches us. So tonight inshallah we continue onwards from page 69. Which is فصل فيما يشترط تبييت النية وتعيينها فيه وما لا يشترط. This chapter now deals with regarding to whether you require a niya before the time or not regarding to the different fasts. So then to begin, بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. He says فصل فيما يشترط تبييت النية وتعيينها فيه وما لا يشترط. He says this chapter deals with those fasts where it is a condition to have an intention f- from the night before and a, a specific intention as well and then those fasts where this is not a condition so he says amma al qism alladhi la yushtaratu fihi ta'yin ta'yin al niyyati la the wow is missing wala tabyituha it should be written here but it just says la tabyituha the wow is missing fa huwa ada'u ramadan wa nadhar wa nadhar al muayyan okay let's start from the beginning he says the first chapter we're going to deal with is the chapter regarding those fasts where it is not a condition to have a specific intention, nor is it a condition that you should have the the intention from the night before. <coughs> so he says, for these type of fasts are فَهُوَ أَدَاءُ رَمَضَانِ Before, uh, Fasting for the month of Ramadan itself, in, on its proper time, then you do not require to have an intention from the night before. Now, I touched on this point previously when I mentioned that there's some ikhtilaf amongst the ulama, uh, I, amongst the, within the Hanbali madhab. I do not know if the, it is the fatwa, but I do know that it is, it is a view within the Hanbali madhab that if you do not make an intention from the night before, then you do not, then your fast is invalid. So, as far as the Hanafi madhab is concerned, it is not a condition that you have to make your intention the night before so this chapter here is saying you firstly you don't have to make it prior when we say the night before meaning prior to dawn before subh sadiq when at the time of fajr enters so the regular suhoor time and everything is all fine for you to make your intention the issue comes now after the time of fajr enters can you still make your intention now or not, provided of course that you have not eaten anything, and this is what we are dealing with over here. So, as far as the Hanafi Madhab is concerned, as Imam Ashirun Bulani Rahimahullah here mentions his opinion, he says that for the month of Ramadan, when you are fulfilling it in its proper time, then you do not, you do not need to make your intention. You should make your intention. It's the correct way to make your intention from the night before. But if you did not make your intention. It, you will still be permitted to make your intention after the time of Fajr has entered. That is basically what he is telling you over here. The second is وَالنَّظْرِ الْمُعَيَّنُ زَمَانَهُ He says that you ha- the second type of fast where you do not require this or rather where this is not a condition is when you have taken a nazar. You ta- you've taken this vow that you will fast on a spe- this particular specific day. Maybe you say, I will fast on the 5th of May, for example. It's now a vow, it's a specific thing, it's set out in things. So on this, if it so happen that on the 5th of May, it comes along now, now you fast, then the if after the time of Fajr has entered, you make your intention now, then it will be valid. You don't have to have your intention prior to the time of Fajr. Now, again, like I just mentioned again, that we are dealing now only with permissibility or impermissibility, not what is better. It goes without saying that the proper, correct way is that you should make your intention beforehand. But this is just here to show you that there's a little bit of leeway. That suppose something has happened, you've over, you were like knocked flat out from Maghrib. You never had a chance to make your intention. You wake up here on. A, a day in Ramadan and the sun has already risen, you've missed your Fajr, Salah, obviously, Suhoor and everything. So, what do you do now? 
is your day lost or can you continue to or will your fast be valid in on this day so a fast uh, fast being valid if you now make your intention again provided be that this takes place before Zawal. Zawal is when the sun reaches its zenith and passes it. So, say, let's work on it like this. Work on a specific time so it makes it easy to understand. Say, for example, 5.30 a.m. is when Subh Sadiq starts. When the time of Fajr enters, it's 5.30 a.m. Then, the sun reaches its zenith at 12.30 and ends at 12.36, that's the period of Zawal, and then after that you're, so from 12.30, you're, it's over too late. So, if you make it anywhere, you've woken up now and the sun is already up, or the time of Fajr has entered, technically, in certain, with, or rather you say with regards to certain fasts, you now cannot fast no more on this particular day your fast will be invalid because you have missed that window of opportunity to make your intention but for the month of Ramadan and for this specific nadar and so on if you make your intention now between half past five and half past twelve your fast for that day will be valid of course provided that you have not eaten or drank anything for that day so anyway, that is with regards to وَالنَّظَرِ الْمُعَيَّنُ زَمَانَهُ A nazar that you avow which you have taken for a specific day. Then he says one naflo, And the same ruling applies to any nafil fast. So you wake up tomorrow and then you find out, Hey, you know what? I t- didn't buy any milk. I've got no milk at home here. So I've got nothing actually to eat for breakfast. You know what? I'll just fast one time. So then you make your intention to fast and you go through the rest of your day like that it will be valid. So, this is now what you call a purely nafil fast that you're doing from your side. It's not a uh, a condition that you should have your intention from the night before. Okay, now it says, فَيُصِحُ بِنِيَّةٍ مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ إِلَى مَا قَبْلَ نِصْفِ النَّهَارِ عَلَى الْأَصَحِ وَنِصْفُ النَّهَارِ مِن تُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ إِلَى وَقْتِ الضَّحْوَةِ الْكُبْرَى He says that these type of fasts, it is valid with an intention from the night before. That uh, it, it it's valid that these type of fasts are valid from the night before until prior to midday, which I said now is before Zawal, before the sun reaches its zenith. Any time before that will be that your fast will be valid according to the most correct view. And then he says that uh, when is, what is midday, Nisfu nahar that he's referring to here, he says, it is min tulu'il fajri ila waqti dhahwati al-kubra that when we talk about the after the time of fajr has already end, uh, entered. So technically this proper window of opportunity of making the intention is now gone. So he says that this time, this extended period is now from the time in Tulu al-Fajr, from the time when Fajr enters, until the time, waqti dhahwati al-kubra meaning the, when the sun reaches at its zenith. So at any time between that point, you will still be able to make your intention. Now he moves on to a bit of a new point. He says, وَيَصِحُ أَيْضًا رَمَضَانَ بِمُطْلَقِ النِّيَّةِ وَبِنِيَّةِ النَّفْلِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مُسَافِرًا أَوْ مَرِيضًا فِي الْأَصَحِ He says that when it comes to the month of fasting, the month of Ramadan, in its actual time, not making qadha of it now. So you're, making, you're fasting the month of uh, uh, Ramadan. He says, بِمُطْلَقِ النِّيَّةِ What a... An unrestricted intention and also with the intention of nafil. He says, even if you are a musafir or a sick person, according to the most correct version, the most correct op- opinion within the madhab. So, let me explain what it means over here. He says that what, it, what this part actually means here is that, say for example, the month of Ramadan is entered, it's now the third of Ramadan. Now you say, I want to uh, make uh, qada of a fast which I missed previously. Or, oh, well, I, I intend to fast today, maybe because it's a Monday and a Thursday. 
for example, something of the sort like this. So you are not intending to fight the month of Ramadan. You are intending something else. Then in this case, according to the most correct version of the Hanafi Madhab, your fast will be valid as the month of Ramadan. Why? Because the month of Ramadan is Fard. So it is all powerful that it crushes any other fast from taking place at that particular time. So no matter what fast you intend, those fasts will all be termed as being invalid and the your, the fast which you have done on that day will be counted as a fast of the month of Ramadan. This now, again, this ruling is for a person who is, uh, it says here, uh, for a person, whether you are a musafir or a sick person, according to the most correct view, which tells you that there is more than one view within the madhab. According to a, another view within the madhab, okay, there are many views within the madhab and uh, another view point within the madhab says that now a person who's traveling he's a musafir so ramadan is not obligatory upon him so if now while he's traveling he now decides to um, fast a nafil fast it's the month of ramadan he decides no i'm not going to fast ramadan now i'm going to fast a nafil fast then that fast would count as a nafil fast and not as the fast of the month of ramadan contrary to a person who is a Muqim, he's in his hometown and everything because now for him Ramadan is obligatory while it's not obligatory for the one who is traveling so you'll get these different viewpoints within the madhab but he says the most correct viewpoint here is that even if the person is a traveler or even if the person is sick again a sick person Ramadan is not obligatory we're not talking about a person here who's just got a headache some small or some small little illness he's got that's not what is referred to here as being a marid, but rather a sick person that when we speak of a sick person, it means a person who is so sick that he cannot fast. Or if he fasts, he will become more sick. A, a, a real sickness, basically. Not some le- small little thing, you prick your finger, now I'm sick, I can't fast today. Not that sort of stuff. Okay, he then he moves on. He says, وَيَصِحُ أَدَاءُ رَمَضَانَ بِنِيَّةِ This is, says wajibin, but it's supposed to be wajibin. بِنِيَّةِ, وا... بنية وَاجِبٍ آخَرَ لِمَنْ كَانَ صَحِيحًا مُقِيمًا بِخِلَافِ الْمُسَافِرِ فَإِنَّهُ يَقَعُ Okay, let me just stop on this point and just deal with this one here. He says that وَيَصِحُ أَدَاءُ رَمَضَانَ بِنِيَّةِ وَاجِبَةِ بِنِيَّةِ وَاجِبٍ آخر لمن كان صحيحا مقيما. He says that a person who in, who's fasting the month of Ramadan now within its time, it's the actual month of Ramadan, and he is healthy and he is a muqim, meaning it's his place, he's not on he's not on a journey or anything of the sort like this, then if he fasts he makes an intention for some other wajib fast. Whatever other wajib fast, like we've just passed by now, if he makes a nafil intention or he makes this or that whatever the case may be all intentions will fall away and the month of ramadan that fast which he has fasted will be counted as a fast of the month of ramadan and if he had fasted some waji fast which he was supposed to do he will have to redo that one but this fast which he had done here will count as ramadan he says he says now a bit of a different opinion comes in here that when it comes to a musafir, like I mentioned now, a musafir, Ramadan is not obligatory upon him. So in the case of a musafir, when a musafir makes an intention for a wajib fast, not a nafil fast, for a wajib fast. Because if you saw here, the previous topic we just touched on is if a, pers- a musafir makes with a nafil intention. So now we're dealing with when he makes a for a wajib intention so at this state of his being a musafir Ramadan is not obligatory upon him and this wajib fast which he's got is also something which is not obligatory immediately at that particular time so he has the ability to make this uh, wajib fast at another stage in time and likewise he, the sharia has given him the permission to fill in this day of Ramadan which he has missed due to him being on a journey so both days hold equal amount of power over him. Therefore, if a musafir now, he makes an intention that, oh Allah, I intend to 
for in this day, let's say for example, he was fasting the tenth of Muharram, and then he, he he got sick and he had to break his fast. Now it's wajib for him to repeat the fast. So this is a wajib fast. So now during the month of Ramadan, he intends. He's now on a journey, and he intends. Oh Allah, I intend to fulfill or rather to make qada of that particular fast of the 10th of Muharram that I must then in this case his fast would be valid as be as fulfilling that must fast from the 10th of, uh, of Muharram and it will not be counted as a fast of Ramadan if you can understand the difference between the two in the previous case Ramadan is something which is all powerful so a nafil cannot stand on the same footing with it but in this case here on a person who's a musafir where neither of the two are obligatory immediately at that particular time but if both are powerful ones farad and wajib but in this sense it's not farad upon him because he's on a journey so therefore he has the option if he wants to fast a wajib one or if he wants to fast ramadan itself he will have the option to do so okay so moving on a little bit further, he says, "Okay, question over here. Uh, that's because uh, Ramadan is temporarily for, forgiven for him. Yes, because as long as he's on a journey, then uh, uh, it is not obligatory for him to fast. So this is what the Sharia has given the the leeway for a, a musafir that fa'ida min ayam in ukhar you fulfil it at some later stage. So therefore." It's not a problem for him. If he wanted to fast the month of Ramadan while traveling, it's up to him. If he don't want to fast at all, it's up to him. If he wants to fast a qada, uh, uh, rather I should say a wajib fast, it's up to him. All three cases would be valid. Okay, question over here. And if he do fast Ramadan, that's not counted with same niyyah for qada for muharram that he must. No. A... Qada for Muharram this year is a wajib. One thing you can't do is join two wajib actions or two farad actions. You can join any number of nafil actions. Now if you remember I, we were speaking about previously about you do one action with many intentions and Allah will reward you for all those intentions. But you cannot do that with regards to the to anything which is obligatory. You can't say okay I'll make my Dhuhr and my Asr Salah I must Dhuhr I've got to make a Asr So I'll in make a, an intention For Qada of Dhuhr And the Ada of Asr And I make four rakats one time That will be invalid So you can't mix up Two obligatory actions But any amount of Nafil actions If you want to mix Two thousand together If you can get two thousand intentions For one Nafil action Allah will accept all those intentions from you So that's there in its place So therefore the if he fasts in Ramadan with a niyyah for qada of of Muharram, then that w- that wouldn't work. He would have to fast each day individually. Wallahu a'lam. All right. Next question: How does qada of Muharram be wajib when it was nafil fast to begin with? This is what we actually just did on on Tuesday night when we did the previous fifth class that what is a we broke fasting down into various categories farad wajib sunnah mandub and and so on and in the category of wajib we dealt with a fast which you have taken upon yourself a nafil fast and then you had broken it then that fast to fulfill or rather to make qada of that fast then becomes wajib so originally it was nafil but upon you taking it on yourself to fast this day and then you've broken it then it now becomes obligatory for you to fulfill it the Hanafi mother uses the ayah as the leader do not let your do not break your amal do not let it go be battle and go to waste so that is the dalil of the Hanafi madhab why you have to make qada of a nafil fast that is why it becomes wajib Wallahu a'lam Okay, question, another question over here. If he fasts a wajib fast in Ramadan, it doesn't count and he has to repeat it right. When it... Okay, let me just uh, make it uh, a bit more clearer. If a person is a person who he has no illnesses and he's not on a journey, 
then Ramadan is obligatory upon him. So in this case, if he tries to fast a wajib fast, that wajib fast will be invalid and the fast will be counted as Ramadan. But if a person is a musafir, in this case, Ramadan is not obligatory upon him. So in this case, if he decides to fast a wajib fast, then in that case, his wajib fast will be valid and he will then have to fill the day in of Ramadan at a later stage as what is it, since it's his prerogative that the sharia has given him the option of fasting or not fasting so therefore if he chooses now to fast another different f- n- wajib fast then that wajib fast would be accepted from him wallahu alam Okay, now he moves on to an, uh, another point over here. He says that وَاخْتَلَفَ التَّرْجِيحُ فِي الْمَرِيضِ إِذَا نَوَى وَاجِبًا آخَرًا فِي رَمَضَانِ He says that the ulama of the Hanafi Madhab now at least, they have ikhtilaf regarding a person who is sick. If he intends some other wajib fast during the month of Ramadan. So, if you notice the one which we just previously passed by, it only mentioned a traveler. It never mentioned a sick person. So now we're dealing with if a person is sick. Generally, a person who's sick to such a degree that fasting is no longer obligatory upon him, then he should supposedly be in the same category as the Musafir because Ramadan is also not obligatory upon that person. But... The ulama have a different difference of opinion with regards to him. So, some of the ulama say that if he fasts, the wajib fast of his would fall away, it would be invalid, and his fast would be counted as Ramadan. And other ulama uh, were of the opinion that no, he is like a musafir, so therefore, if he fasts a different wajib fast, then his wajib fast would be accepted and would be considered as being valid and he would then have to repeat the fast of Ramadan at a later stage. Okay, but uh, in any case, that's on that point over there. The fatwa which is generally given is that the Musaf Yes, it's a valid ikhtilaf within the madhab. You have people, great people, Imam uh, as sarakhsi rahimahullah, mentioning the, holding the opposite opinion that the, if he makes a, a, a intention for a qada fast, then the qada would fall away and it would be considered as being uh, Ramadan. But the Imam al-Marghinani rahimahullah mentions in al-Hidayah that, uh, the fast would be counted for what he intended meaning that a, a sick person and a musafir are treated exactly the same since ramadan is not obligatory upon them therefore if they intend to fast some other wajib fast then the wajib fast would be counted and not the month of ramadan so the difference within the madhab but the more chosen view is the latter view that the musafir and the marid are both treated the same way Alright, now we move on f- further. He says, وَلَا يَصِحُ الْمَنْظُورِ الْمُعَيَّنِ زَمَانَهُ بِنِيَّةٍ وَاجِبِ Okay, he says, وَلَا يَصِحُ لِلنُّذُورِ Not منظور, لِلنُّذُورِ Okay, there's another mistake over here. This wow don't belong over here. It's supposed to be وَلَا يَصِحُ لِلنُّذُورِ الْمُعَيِّنُ زَمَانَهُ بِنِيَّةِ وَاجِبٍ غَيْرِهِ بَلْ يَقَعُ عَمَّا نَوَاهُ مِنَ الْوَاجِبِ فِيهِ Lots of typing errors over here. Any case, what he's saying is that a person who has now made a, a, a vow that he will fast on these on a, some specific days for such a person he let's say for example uh, 
he, he made this intention that he will fast this and this in this particular day but then this the This day ha it comes. Okay, let's work with the fifth of May, as we mentioned uh, previously. So he made this vow that, oh Allah, I will fast. If this and this happens, I will fast on the fifth of May. Then this thing happens for him, that he made the another four. So now it now becomes obligatory upon him to fast the, now on the fifth of May. But then yeah, the fifth of May comes along and. Now he chooses biniyati wajib in ghayrihi. He decides to make an intention for a different wajib. That now he says, okay, you know what? I fast today for the that qada, that, that wajib qada I have to now make of the 10th of Muharram. So in this case, he says, بَلْ يَقَعُ عَمَّا نَوَاهُ مِنَ الْوَاجِبِ فِيهِ That... Uh, Okay, so basically what he's saying over here is that you've now taken this vow that you will fast on this particular day, but then this particular day comes along and you you now make an intention to fast the qada which you have missed of the 10th of Muharram. So in this case here, the qada which you intended of the 10th of Muharram, that uh, niyyah, that intention will be valid. So that 10th of Muharram will now be completed and... You, and the, the fast of your day will be valid but now you've now got this another this vow which you have taken you now obviously must eat stay because you went to fast a different fast in its place so therefore you will now be required to fulfill or rather make qada of this another fast of yours because you went to use the actual day of the another for some other fast so the another fast is a wajib fast in this sense here and the fast the qada fast is both wajib as well so therefore if you now make this other intention then the other wajib intention will be valid and you will now have to make qada of this another fast yes all of this is based merely on the intention. Your intention governs everything. That's why in al-amalu bin niyat that your intentions, your actions are judged according to your intentions. So, as far as the action is concerned, you are fasting. Now, whether you are fasting Ramadan, whether you are fasting kafara, whether you are fasting a nazar, whether you are fasting a qada, whatever the case may be, the action all look exactly the same, but the intention is what makes it different from one another. If you perform Dhuhr and Asr and Isha Salah, all four of them look the same, but your intention obviously will differ. Okay, only difference is that with the Isha Salah, if it's performed in Jama'ah, then it will be read loudly. But other than that, uh, if you take like Dhuhr and Asr, the two of them are performed identical to one another, but the intention is what differs them f from one another. Alright, so that's the end then of that chapter. Now we move on to a, a slightly new point, the second part. He says, وَأَمَّا الْقِسْمُ الثَّانِي What is now the second type of uh, fast? Because we touched the first type where you don't require any int the intention to be made beforehand. Now we're dealing with those where you require the intention beforehand. He says, وَأَمَّا الْقِسْمُ الثَّانِي وَهُوَ مَا يُشْتَرَطُ فِيهِ تَعْيِينُ النِّيَّةِ وَالتَّبْيِيدُهَا He says, this is now those where it is a condition that you should have the intention, a specific intention, and also have the intention before the time that Fajr sets in. He says, فَهُوَ قَضَاءُ رَمَضَانِ He says, the first type is the قَضَاءُ of Ramadan. So during Ramadan, for Ramadan itself, if you wake up in the morning and you must your Fajr Salah, then you make your intention, uh, you know, you the time of Fajr has already entered, 
So you must suhoor on everything. You never made your intention the night before. So in this case, yeah, you wake up, you make your intention, and you fast throughout the day. But when it comes now to fulfilling a qada of Ramadan, so let's say for example you were sick in Ramadan, so you must start five days. Now you've got five days which you have to fulfill. Now you happen to wake up one morning and like I say, you see, okay, I've got no food in the house today. You know what? I'll make up the this qada which I've got of Ramadan. This will not be valid. Why? Because the... It, this is now qada and it's not ada. It's not performed in its time. It's now a repeat at the later stage. So in this case here, you require this intention to be made prior to the time of subuh sadiq. So if it's made after subuh sadiq, the fast will be considered invalid and you will then, you may decide to go through the day without eating, but it will not be considered to be a valid fast and this qada which you have got to make these five days, you will still have five days after fasting this particular day through so that's firstly the qada of ramadan he says wa ma afsadahu min naflin again look like uh, min naqlin but it's min naflin he says likewise any qada any nafil fast which you have made qada uh, rather any nafil fast which you have broken which you are now required to make qada of you are required to make the intention from the night before as well me prior to Subuh Sadiq. So you can now again wake up and say, okay, no, I, I got to full now fulfill this day. I'll decide to make it now. It won't work like that. You've got to make your intention from the day before, or rather, you say just you should make your intention prior to Subuh Sadiq in case somebody thinks that you have to actually make it the the day before before you go sleep. In any case, he moves on further. He says, "Wa somul kafarati bi anwa'iha." والمنظور المطلق كقوله okay let me leave the منظور he says likewise also if you are fasting any you fought any kafara so the whether it's kafara the 60 consecutive days then you require the intention before subah salih and he says بأنواعها all the different types meaning if it's like Kafara to Yameen, you've broken an oath, now you are required to fast, you don't have the money to feed people, you don't have slaves to sit free and all that, now you come and you fast three consecutive days. Then in this case here also, you require to make your intention prior to Subuh Salik. The last one he says, وَالنَّوْرُ الْمُطْلَقُ كَقَوْلِهِ إِنْ شَفَ اللَّهُ مَرِيضِي فَعَلَيَّ صَوْمُ يَوْمٍ فَحَصَلَ الشِّفَاءَ he says, likewise, if you take an if you take this vow, a an unrestricted vow, by saying, if Allah cures this illness of mine, then it is obligatory upon me to fast a day, and then he he gets cured. Meaning that if he makes this intention, let's say for example, you make it, you take this another that oh Allah, if you if you cure my cancer, I will fast a day. If your cancer is cured, it becomes obligatory for you to fast a day. But if your cancer does not get cured, it will not become obligatory upon you to fast that day. That's the important point to note over there, that it only becomes obligatory once the condition you have put down becomes fulfilled. So once, like this, in this case you made, that your cancer be cured, only once your cancer is cured will this fast now become obligatory upon you. That's why it says, فَحَصَّلَ shifa that the shifa at the cure has taken place you have now been healed now in this case it now becomes obligatory for you to fast so a uh, if you now want to fulfill a fast of this sort then you are required to make your intention also prior to subuh sadiq Okay, so we've now reached the end of the topic with regards to what fast you require an intention for and what you do not, or rather I should say, all of them you require an intention for. The only difference is how much time you have to make your intention. With the first, first category of fasts, you have right up until just before midday. And with the second category of fasts, you have only up until 
through dawn. So that's the end of this chapter here. And the next chapter, inshallah, will now move on to a different chapter with regards to the seeing of the moon and fasting your mushak and so on and so forth. But that, inshallah, we will do next week, Tuesday. So uh, we will end then on this point here, inshallah. So if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to ask your questions here now. Alright then, seeing as we have no questions, then inshallah we will end on this point here for tonight. And like I say, we will continue again from this chapter next week Tuesday. So until then, we will end for now when we say, Wassallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.